Well, first of all, it's mean the world to me to be home and to do this interview and also to do the show on Friday because let me know that people love me and I want to let them know and show them that I love them in, in return, you know. Like we've had many and many of entertainers to come home and, and, and the people have to pay to see them. And frankly, I think that I owe it to them. I owe it to myself to be this fortunate to be chose to do this and deliver love to my audience at home as well as abroad. And it means so much to me that I'm doing it free. I mean, I want to give them back what they've given me because it had not been for them that God put all this love in their heart for me. There wouldn't be no Gwen. And I thank them with all my heart and anything else that I can do. I've been around a long time. Professionally, I, uh, over 55 years, it's about professionally, I've been singing and professionally, and, I, and, I've, and I've had a lot of numerous awards and from the people. And I never knew that I had lasted as long in what I was doing. And I never knew really who I was until I had a, I, I, even though I've, I've had Grammy nominees and gold records, one, one from Canada, you know, and one from the United States and numerous awards, R&B awards. Like two years ago, I was nominated for the the Woman of Blues Song of the Year, and then I won. And then I had the, the next, the following year, I had the number one female Woman of the Year, Blues Woman of the Year, and it just and now they're saying about putting me up for the uh, the, the the one who has the, the longevity in this business. But James Brown was was what well, that was interesting. That was great when James Brown, and also when Teddy Pendergrass called me a bionic woman with a little little body and a big voice. And then there was people like uh, The Temptations. There's people like, uh, uh, oh shoot, when I did the, did, did, did the, the ship, when I did the, uh, when I did the, 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 with James Brown at the, at the uh, Madison Square Gardens, when I did the Cow Palace with Eddie Kendrick in California, and when I did, uh, oh my God, there's just so many, when I did Paris, when, and then, then they had the JBs with me when I did Paris, the generals with James Brown, and the last time I saw James Brown, that was a, a memorable um, uh, thing I'll never forget. When I saw him, he said, he said to Mr. Bobbitt, Mr. Bobbitt, we were just talking about Gwen just the other day, wondering what she's doing. I said, I, I said, really? I said, oh, you look good, James. He said, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. Comes out with them green and yellow rollers in his hair. <laughs> they were funny. <laughs> First of all, on the concert Friday night, I want everybody to be there to hear this song. My, my number one Grammy nominee, number one record, it let me be your rocking chair. It's still rocking all over the world. And now the next one's gonna be some stuff they never even heard of. Like in Europe, for instance, they've heard of Keep the Fires Burning, All This Love That I'm Given, which was Willie Hutch who wrote these songs for me. And then I'm gonna be doing like Make Me Yours. And uh, I'm gonna be doing like uh, Getting What I Want. And I mean, just 90% of me is you. Uh, I'm gonna do some of Summertime, my arrangement of Summertime. And I'm gonna be doing uh, Knock on Wood. I mean, some old stuff, this is gonna be a club, this is gonna be fun. I'm your woman, take me in your arms and rock you, baby.